Hello friends, Mark Johnson here. Welcome back to my video series on Tririga development. This is going to be part two of our business objects development and in this session we are going to cover associations and we are doing this in a Tririga 11.1 4.1 instance so let's get ourselves logged in here so we can just kind of pick up and continue from where we were. So just a quick recap, right? We're working on a business object and so that is under the data modeler. So we need to go to tools and data modeler, hover over the object browser, it'll pop out and then we can go down to our module, which is CSD Sports. We'll go ahead and expand it and then we've got our CSD Sports base BO, which again is the first business object created in, in the module. So here's where we left off. We created our business object. We've got our properties. We can see that our properties are set here. And then there's nothing else. So what we want to do is we need to set up some associations because when we get to adding fields, we're going to add some classification fields for status and previous status uh, at a minimum. And so in order to set up those classification fields, we need to have the association exist already. So that's what we're going to go and, and do. So the status and previous status get used all throughout Trariga. It's kind of a standard. And so we want to go and see, well, what's the association string that's actually getting used so that we create the correct association? So if you don't know off the top of your head and it's something that's used in Trariga, it's easy enough to, to go and look. So I'm just going to pop over to location and we'll grab um, the the building and then I'm going to just scroll down and look for the the status um, sometimes it's easier just to use the built-in browser search functionality And I can see here's the previous status field, and then here's the, the current status. So if I click on this association, it's going to go ahead and open up its properties here in the, in the properties window. So you, we can see in the properties, it tells us, okay, what's the module, what's the business object, then the association string that's being used, and then the associated module business object, the reverse association string, and then whether this is dependent We'll go ahead and talk about some of this before we go to create our own association. So an association is just a relationship between objects. You know, for example, right now, I'm the, the teacher or the instructor and you are the student. So there's an association between us, right? So we could say that the association from me to you would be has student, right? And then there's the association from you back to me, right? It changes based off of the perspective of which object you're going from. So whatever object you're going from, that association going out from that object is its forward association, and the association coming from the associated object back is the reverse association. So in our little example, from me to the student would be has student, and then from the student back to me might be is student of, right? And then maybe you're using a different association for some reason from the student to the teacher, right? You can say has teacher, right? And then from the teacher back to the student would be like is teacher of. So whatever string you use really isn't important. The system doesn't care at all. What's important is that you're consistent in that usage. Now, just because it's not necessarily important what string you use doesn't mean you should just pick any old string or just use has for everything. Right? I, I would encourage you to pick meaningful association strings that kind of help at least tell or imply you know, how or why the objects are related to each other. So now that we've discussed forward and reverse association, all right, we can see that here on our screen. Right? So this from this location, building, right? the try building business object to the status business object. Uh, use the association of current status and then status of. So if I scroll down here and I actually look at the tri status classification field, right, 
I can see that it is using that association string of current status. So I've now verified that that's the correct string. Right? So if I want to go and create this association for myself, it's current status and then status of. So I'm going to come back here and go to my business object. And I'm going to go new and then new association. Now, an interesting thing here is this particular business object is in revision because it's in the process of being created. You can, however, add associations to business objects without having to revise them. There is one kind of exception. There is a special type of an association that's called an include that we'll get to, which is really just a parent-child relationship. And if the business object that you're creating the include on is not in revision, it doesn't always hook up right. It'll appear correct and things are in their right place uh, in the UI, but can in the back end they're, they're they're not really hooked up and it can cause problems and be difficult to understand. Now, I don't know if that has ever changed, to be honest with you. So I've learned to develop in a way that prevents me from running into that issue. So I always revise the business object before I add the association. And this is good too because, you know, if you're modifying a business object, you want the object label to change so that you can see that it's it's been customized, right? The functionality is different if there's a different association there. So creating our association, we're going to go from our sports module, our sports business object, and the association, if you remember, was called current status. So I can just start typing that in here, uh, and it will jump down in the in the drop down. So you don't have to go scanning through. Uh, so it's a little bit of a time saver, but not a lot. And it's going to classification, and it's the tri status bo that's in the classification. And there it is. And then the reverse association was status of. Okay. So I can go ahead and, and create my association now by coming up here and clicking on uh, Save Association. Now you can see there are a couple other things. We have this dependent flag, and then there's this Create section that's, that's grayed out. So the dependent flag, if I was to select this, then what that means is the object that I'm associating to is a dependent of my object. Right? So then if I get, or if my object gets deleted, then that dependent object should get deleted. So Think of it, you know, like a, a you know, purchase order and purchase order line items, right? If you have a purchase order and you delete that purchase order, its line item should also get deleted, right? However, you wouldn't want to delete a line item and have it delete the entire purchase order, right? So always pay attention to, you know, what object you're on and the direction it's going, right? It's that the, the object that you're associating to. So you're walking the forward association to, right? You're saying is a dependent, and so. If you have that set to where it is a dependent, then there's some other settings here that are now available for you. These other settings are related to this dependency. Right? So the first one here, project containment disabled, which basically just says that, hey, um, it, whatever project that my parent object here is in, when, I, when the child object is created, it's going to get created into that same project container. Um, and project containers are something we'll talk about in some future uh, video. But uh, if you do have questions about it, you can always go to the, uh, the App Builder Guide, and you can look up some of this stuff. So for instance, if I pull over my guide here, you can see there's uh, you know information on project containment. You search for it, you can find it, and it'll talk to you about, you know, what it does, and then there's actually uh, some additional information about it. But we're not going to go, you know, too too deep into it uh, right now. But if I didn't want the child record or my dependent record to be it, get automatically put into the same project container as this parent record, then I could select this box to disable that project containment so that it wouldn't happen uh, automatically. Uh, <clears throat> Not sure exactly why you'd want to do that,
but uh, it's nice to have that flexibility where you can either allow it or, or not allow it. The next setting is cascade read only. And this is a somewhat of a newer property and it takes whenever the parent object is in read only, then it automatically makes the child or the dependent objects read only. Now this used to be done solely through the use of workflow. And so whenever you had a parent object, you would have to then call a workflow which would walk your association to the child objects and then move them into a read only state, right? And then likewise, when you would, you know, put the parent object into an editable state, you'd have to call workflow and go and then move those objects into an editable state as well. Now there is still a lot of that old functionality within Tririga, but you don't have to do it anymore as you create new objects. You can just use this cascade read only. It's a much more uh, efficient mechanism. So we'll probably talk about this a little bit more to uh, when we are talking about state families and what makes records uh, read only. But so it's just you check box it to select it yes or you uncheck it for it to be no, right? Simple kind of true false type thing. All right, we have our association. We've got our forward association string or our reverse association string. We've got our associated module and business object. Everything looks good at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save association and it's gonna create our association over here. Now we need to do the same thing for the, the previous status. And I'm going to go back to the building just so I can validate again what the uh, proper strings are. And you can see here on the building too, right? You've got these yellow um, associations and then there's blue and then there's white. Uh, this actually covers, you know, all the different varieties for us. So the yellow is actually smart sections which are created from an association and they allow us to bring in data from another record and display it on our record. So we will uh, talk about those in a bit. And then these blue ones are your includes. These are the special associations which defines that parent-child relationship. In other words, what kind of objects can be created at what level in the hierarchy. So as you can see here, right, for the building, it's the parent of floors and it's also the parent of vertical shafts. So in the hierarchy, if you have a building and you go to create something underneath the building, it's either got to be a floor or a vertical shaft. And then these white ones are just the regular uh, association. So let's go here and look at our previous status and just say, okay, the association is previous status and the reverse association is previous status of. So that's pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and come back, open up our BO, and we'll select new, new association, and it was just previous status, and it is the try status. So again, you can start typing in, and it'll jump to that point in the list, can make it faster, and then it was previous status of, and it's all the same settings as far as dependents. We're not going to make this dependent association. So we're going to save our association. So now at this point in time, we've defined two associations and we're likely to, you know, define more as we go along and we kind of flush out what, uh, what logic and what functionality uh, that we want to have. Um, and we will, we will actually add some more associations because if you look now on pretty much every object, there is a try record keeper association. Um, you also have uh, an association for capturing uh, the the created by. So there's a there's a, a people association. So there's a couple associations that we'll we're going to go ahead and we'll go ahead and set. But we don't need to you know record the video of creating the associations because it's done the same way. And uh, again, the easiest thing to do for some of these associations that are used as a standard uh, is to just you know go and look somewhere else in the system where it's in use. So one of the other things that you should do as you're going you're creating associations is we've discussed the forward and the reverse association. So from our sports business object, right? We have our forward association and of current status and previous status, and we're associating to the try status object. Now, 
it is the best practice to go and then go to that other object and do the same process and create those association strings coming back to our object. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So uh, that's under the classification. And try status is our business object. So we'll go down to try status. And so again, right, I can just click new and association and it'll let me add the associations here. No problem. But I like to always just uh, revise the business object because uh, one of the things that I always do is I record, uh, you know, what it is that I'm that I'm changing. So I actually I haven't introduced this yet, but this is what I call an OM tracker. And so I record down every change that I make uh, to a system when I'm when I'm customizing, so that I know which objects I have to add into my OAM packages. Now objects do have modify dates and stuff, and so you can go and search based off a name, but you know you end up with false positives that way sometimes because you might revise an object and go, you know, start to do some development and then realize, you know what, I don't need these changes, and then so you you back out of it. Well, it's going to have a modified date that's updated, right? And so if you're just searching based off modified date, now you're going to add that object to your own package when it doesn't need to be. So uh, the best way to, to keep your packages, you know, as small as possible and stuff is just to keep track of your objects that you're modifying yourself. So I just have a little spreadsheet that, you know, tells me, uh, you know, what what the object is. Um, and for the, you know, the BO and the module, it's a little bit repetitive, uh, right? But for everything else, right, those go into, for the most part, you know, modules or BOs. And so I just, you know, capture, you know, what it is, you know, and then for the action type, you know, just, hey, is it new? Is it, um, it, it, it my, or is it, is it modify, right? Am I customizing, right? And then for the description to change, right, you can put, you know, whatever kind of detail you want in there. I usually don't put a ton of detail because I'm not, using this to capture and log every single little change that I've made, but to just capture what objects I have changed. So I'm going to go and modify the classification uh, status BO. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. Let's try status as our BO and it will modify. And then And just give a little blurb of what it is. All right. So we are on our classification, and we have revised this. So I'm going to go ahead and come up and click New, and Association. And if you remember, the 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 association string from the perspective of the status was status of. Right, and it's going to our CST Sports, CST Sports business object. Since there's only one BO, the system was smart enough to just default that for us, which is kind of nice. And then it was current status is our association. And this is definitely not a dependent relationship. Right, because we made it dependent and somebody deleted the status uh, record that was associated to our record, then it would delete our record read. We definitely do not want that. All right, so that's one association. And then we're going to go ahead and click and create the next association. And it's previous status of, oops. Let's go into our CST Sports. And this is previous status. So you can see, right, the, the forward association from tri-status was the reverse association when we were on CST Sports. So 
whether something is forward association or reverse association, it all just depends on the perspective of what object you're on or to what object you're going to. So I'm going to go ahead and save the association. And I am going to publish my BO. So my My associations are here now, right? So if I come up and just validate this, all right, we have previous status and status up. So my associations are here. This business object has been modified, but notice its object label did not change, even though we revised it. So the system thinks it hasn't changed because the system doesn't look at the associations. This is a problem, right? Because the object label is the number one tool we have to tell what objects have been customized so that when we're going to do an application upgrade, we can merge the functionality. Now, fortunately, at this point, we're not really at risk of losing these customizations because the associations will merge. So, uh, you know, if we, 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 you know, bring in the, the new version, it's not going to, you know, overwrite and replace this. But depending on what method is used for the upgrade, it, you know, you could potentially lose it if they're recreating the customizations and they don't know there was customizations on this object. So, th you know, this, this is a problem. Uh, you know, the, the object label needs to be modified. We won't do that right now. I'll actually show that later. However, right, I do have my trusty list, so I know that I modified that tri status BO so that I can include it in my object uh, migration package when I go to create one. So I did mention that, you know, there are some different types of associations. You've got the includes, which is just a special type of association that defines the parent-child relationship. And then there's the smart sections, which get created up of the associations. I will actually cover these and cover the creation of these things uh, in, in a future video. Uh, so for now, this is all there's going to be on associations. But uh, technically, those other things are part of the associations. But I want to keep these videos kind of short and easy to consume. That way uh, you can just jump to the video that you want. So when it does get time to do, you know, smart sections, there will be a video just on smart section and you can watch just that without having to go through a, a really long video to get to that point. And so let's go ahead and go back to our Sports module MBO. We've got our associations, so that means in our next uh, video, uh, when we go to create fields, we'll have some of the associations that we need there. I am going to go ahead and uh, create a couple more associations. The process is exactly the same, and then I'll show you what they are, but I'm going to uh, pause the video while I do that uh, just in the interest of time. I do want to show you real quick which associations that I'm going to be created because these are all kind of used as standards on just about every object within Tririga. So right now I am currently I am on the vertical shaft under the location module. So current status, previous status. So we've created those already, right? The system associated to Tri System Record Keeper is one. The Tri People Auto Recorder by is another, and the try project is contained by is a, a, another. So pretty much every business object that you create should have those particular associations. Now there are a couple other common ones depending on um, if you're going to have like approvals and routings on your particular object, then you're also going to want to create these two associations um, for for notifications and for approvals. So, and then if it uh, is an object that has a calendar, then, then
than the calendar one. It's also another. But our sports one isn't going to have a calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create these other uh, associations. And then I'll pop back and show them to you. But uh, I do want to point out to you, see all these you know, red asterisks next to these associations? Well, that just indicates that they are dependent to association. Right? So I can look and see what, what, which associations have, are, are dependent, which is you know, very nice and, and helpful that they, they do that. So we'll go ahead and add these associations, and we'll be right back. One thing I want to show you real quick, though, as I'm going to create this new association, I'm still on the vertical shaft here, but I can create the association uh, on my CST Sports object, even though I haven't browsed to it. Now, my personal preference is I always like to browse to the object that I'm adding stuff to, because I like to see it pop up on the screen over here and know that it, you know, and know that it's there and validate my work. Uh, that way, I make sure I'm not you know, accidentally adding the association to the wrong object. The system, though, right, it doesn't care because you have this ability to select, right? So I can come down here and say CSD Sports, CSD Sports, and then auto recorded by, and try people, try people, and then auto recorded. And save the association, right? So this is another reason why I don't like to do this from another object. So you can see our association list window changed. So it's actually showing us our CST sports object. However, the field list did not change. It's still on the vertical shaft. So I'm seeing the fields that are on the vertical shaft, but the associations that are on my CST sports business object, right? So you can see how it can get real confusing about which object you're on, and you can accidentally add stuff to the wrong object. So my recommendation is for whenever you're going to add associations, that you always go and click on the BO that you're actually going to add the association on, so you have its fields, its association list, its properties window up, and then add your associations. So. We're going to go ahead and uh, get the rest of these associations added real quick, and we'll see you back shortly. All right, welcome back, friends. I now have my associations. These are all kind of the standard associations that should be on every business object. They're used um, kind of as uh, a standard within Tririga. So you see I have the two dependent associations for approval and notifications so that uh, if we go ahead and implement approvals and notifications on any of the business objects in this module, we will have those as we add them. And that's all there really is to associations. There's not much to it. So just again, the association is just a relationship between two objects. And you just use strings to describe those. And uh, for those strings, if there isn't one that uh, is suitable. You can add additional association strings, so it's a list, which we will we will get to um, in a future video. But I will just show you which list it is real quick. So it is under the system module, and it is called association types, and it is a very large list. And so you can see, uh, you know, here it is. This can take a bit to load sometimes. But if you needed to add in a new string, you would type, you know, you would type it here, right? You'd hit uh, save entry, then it would add it down here, and then you would be able to sort the list, put in alphabetical order, and then, and uh, then you could save the sequence of the list uh, after that. So this is where all the strings, the association strings, come from. It is these these guys here, and that is the list that we get to choose from. So if you needed a new string, something that wasn't there, obviously try to, to look and see if there's a string that makes sense first, and then if there isn't, then you, know, you can go ahead and, and create it, and then it will be present for you to select from in those, in those dropdowns. So... 
We've got our associations. Again, it's just a relationship between two objects. We use strings to define that relationship. You want to pick meaningful strings. Don't just use has in both directions or associated to in both directions, um, even though you'll see that uh, in some places in the system. For instance, the system record keeper, right? It's associated in both directions. There's a forward association and a reverse association, and whether it's forward or reverse is just perspective of which object you're going from and to. And then there's a special type of association called includes, which is for the parent child, which we will uh, discuss and show when we go to create a, a, a classification record and BO. So that is it for the associations now. Uh, thank you for watching. Please, as always, uh, like and subscribe uh, to the channel. It's the only way I have of knowing if you guys uh, like this content and want me to continue to make content. Because if I don't get enough interaction, then I'll just quit making content because I put a lot of time uh, and effort into this. And if it's not valued or needed, then I would rather spend my time uh, focusing in on, on some of my other uh, uh, tools and interests and in and, and, and Tririga uh, and getting better at Tririga rather than just doing videos. So again, thank you, like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next session.